We have the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Indianapolis Colts. This is your Week 15 2023 prediction and preview video. Hit subscribe button if you're new. Also, hit the like button. Let's start with the Indianapolis Colts. This is a crucial game for both of these teams. And last week, the Indianapolis Colts did not come out to play. They lost in dominant fashion to the Cincinnati Bengals 34-14, to and it was an abysmal day. They only had one offensive touchdown on the day, and that's not like the Indianapolis Colts. They've been a very up-and-down team this season, but Gardner Minshew has been fine at the quarterback position. He hasn't been a top five to top ten quarterback, but he's been very solid. He did throw an interception last week. He had 240 passing yards and one touchdown. They're definitely missing Jonathan Taylor, who had surgery a couple weeks ago, and he's going to be out for this game as well. And this game against the Steelers, you want to target those linebackers in the middle of the field. This is a team right now that's dealing with a lot of injuries. You want to get Zach Moss going and try to run the football. Last week is part of the reason to why they lost that game, because they cannot run the football. Zach Moss had 13 carries for only 28 rushing yards. That's 2.2 yards a carry. That's unlike him. And the longest rush of the day was for 12 yards. So he wasn't getting much done in the day. Feed him and be patient with the run game. Shane Steichen has to do that and also get Trey Sermon going as well. But run the football on the Steelers team. And then you can work into play action and you can scratch out the defense. The Steelers secondary has been very up and down this season. But their linebackers and coverage have not been that good due to injuries. Target them in the middle of the field and get the ball to the tight ends. Mo Alley Cox had a receiving touchdown last week. Target him more. Get Michael Pittman. More involved as well. He did have 95 receiving yards last week for eight catches, but definitely get him involved in this game across the middle of the field and get things going to Jonathan Downs as well. This could be a very good offensive day for the Indianapolis Colts, but run the football, and it does come down to the offensive line protection as well. You do not want them to go out there and have T.J. Watt, now it's Highsmith, teeing off on Gardner Minshew. You'd be in a horrible situation. Now let's talk about the defense for the Indianapolis Colts. They could not stop Jake Browning last week. He had 275 passing yards, two touchdowns. He did throw one interception. It was a pick six by Ronnie Harrison. The tight end slipped, and Ronnie Harrison came out of nowhere and went away with the ball for the pick six. And this game against the Steelers stopped their run game. Their offense is struggling hard right now. Keep Mr. Trubisky in the pocket and make him read the defense, and you can be in a very good situation. The secondary did not come to play last week, but you're going to get some very good wide receivers, but you want Mr. Trubisky to beat you with his arm. This is going to be a big game for DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart, and Taven Bryant. Go out there and stop Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. This team allowed a huge catch. For Chase Brown last week that went for 54 yards and a touchdown off a screen play. Do not let Jalen Warren do that with his speed. The linebackers have to be patient, hit the holes when needed, and it's going to come down to Zaire Franklin as well to covering Jalen Warren in space. They will also give Najee Harris the football as well in the pass game, but he doesn't have the same explosive speed as Jalen Warren. Watch out for him, and also watch out for Calvin Austin third as well. George Pickens is a freak of a wide receiver, but they don't target him that much in the game. Make sure you keep those running backs in front of you. It can be in a very good situation. But it starts getting pressure up front, making sure Mr. Trubisky is contained in the pocket and reading that defense. Now let's talk about the Steelers. This team is on a two-game losing streak, and they're in a bad situation. They lost to the Arizona Cardinals, who only had two wins, and they lost last week to the New England Patriots, who only had two wins. And Ezekiel Elliott made them pay in the receiving game. You want to come out on the defensive side and do a better job of containing running backs in space. A Landon Roberts can tackle. But his athleticism is not there. He needs help. So you want to go out there, shift the defensive line, and make sure that you load up that box and make sure that you do not let Gardner Minshew go out there and survive off the run game. Gardner Minshew, at points in time, is a very good quarterback. When you put a lot of pressure around him, he can fold. It's going to come down to T.J. Watt, Cameron Hayward, and Alice Highsmith. The defense has been a strong suit this team for this entire season, but they have to come out, bring in that blitz if you need to, but put pressure on Gardner Minshew and make sure you do not have those running backs come out the field. Do not let those running backs beat you off the screen game. But the defense can be in a very good situation. I am worried about how they will look against the run for the entire game. I'm also worried about how they will look against Michael Pittman Jr. as well. Joy Porter Jr. has looked very good in the last couple weeks, but Patch Peterson has been very inconsistent. He's going to come down to who's guarding him one-on-one in that man or zone coverage. As far as the offense for the Steelers, they have to do something early in this game. They can't start off flat. Run the football with Najee Harris and Jalen Warren if you need to. Run the two-back system if you have to, but get something going on the offensive end. And if they can't run the football, just air it out to Deontay Johnson and air it out to George Pickens at this point. But you cannot go out there and just be ultra-conservative with Mitch Trubisky like how they were in the first half of last week. In the fourth quarter, they got things going. Mitch Trubisky had a beautiful touchdown pass to Deontay Johnson. 
Johnson, but he also has to be better with his accuracy. He had 190 passing yards off of 35 pass attempts, one touchdown, one interception. He has to be decisive with the ball, get the ball out quick, and also have Mr. Trubisky run the football as well. He had 30 yards rushing and one rushing touchdown for a QB sneak. He is better when he can work off play action and when he can move around outside the pocket. Help him. Read the defense better by opening things up off the run game. Dink and dunk your way down the field at times. But if that doesn't work, and I know the Steelers love to open out the game slow. If that doesn't work, you have to throw the football deep. You saw what happened when Deontay Johnson had a 25-yard catch that went for a touchdown. They can beat the corners on this team. Just give them the opportunity to. And there is no reason to why George Pickens should only have 19 receiving yards in the game. Get him going early in this game. He can be in a very good situation. The Steelers are a team that usually plays down to competition. And the Indianapolis Colts have a positive record. So that means they're going to play up to competition in this game. But I believe the Indianapolis Colts have too much for the Steelers. I'm taking the Indianapolis Colts to win this game 24-17. to But let me know in the comment section below. Who do you have to win this game? The Indianapolis Colts or the Pittsburgh Steelers? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, each and every last one, guys, stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Peace.